premium Japanese short grain rice is globally acknowledged as the pinnacle of quality. So how is it that a legendary Japanese variety called Koshihakari is being grown in Australia's Riverina district? For the answer, we need to go back more than 100 years into where the first Australian commercial crop of rice was produced in 1914. On River Murray floodplains, not far from Swan Hill, a very determined man successfully grew a rice crop from Japanese seed. Locals knew him as Joe. Joe Takasuka came to Australia 1905 with his wife, Ichi, and their two children. He knew how to grow rice because he's already experienced in Japan, so that he believed could be grow in Australia. The story of this man's struggle to grow a new crop in the Australian landscape inspired Mina Matsudaira to write about Tatuska's life and pioneering efforts. Joe struggled for many years after renting a small area of land from a local farmer, he eventually was granted 200 acres by the Victorian government for rice trials. The river was his crop's lifeblood and its enemy. Levees built by Tatuska to hold back floods were repeatedly washed away. But his perseverance was rewarded in 1914 and he had rice to sell. It was the best result to date, but a lot of bad seasons meant he was unable to sow another successful crop until the early 20s. Eventually, Riverina farmers followed Joe's lead. The region's clean environment, healthy climate, availability of fresh water gave Japanese rice varieties a foothold in Australia's farming landscape but it took years of breeding and research to give the Riverinas rice growers what they needed to establish an industry. I guess we've uh, come a long way with adoption of the Japanese rice varieties from learning what Joe Takasura did back in Swan Hill years ago and his pioneering efforts. We've learnt how to grow Koshiakari, one of the mainstay rices that we've started with as far as short grain rices go. The success of Koshihakari and other Japanese short grain varieties has given Australian rice growers premium options. It's also strengthened the bond between Australia and Japan. I guess I've been lucky enough to work with the Japanese for over, over 23 years now and understanding their culture and the way they treat the rice as almost sacred is really important and working with the Japanese still today to actually keep learning, keep making that rice better is really important to me, but it's also really important to our team of agronomists, our researchers, and also our growers. Global demand for Australian short grain rice has increased as its reputation has become even better known. And that is in no small way due to the Japanese heritage of our short grain varieties, the climate in Australia and the passion of the Australian grain grower. In the Riverina region alone, there are up to 1,500 rice growers. On average, they deliver approximately 750,000 tonnes to Sunrise annually, making Sunrise a $1.1 billion global branded food company. It's the quality, the purity and the traceability of our product that our customers really demand and like, and that's what it is that sets us apart from everybody else. More than 100 years ago, Joe Tatuska saw the potential for growing rice in Australia. He died in Japan in 1940 and didn't witness the rise of the Australian rice industry. However, his pioneering efforts are remembered. In the Riverina, we have honoured Joe Takaska's pioneering achievement and in his home prefecture, Ehime in Japan, he is also honoured today. It's a bond always exists Australia and Japan. <laughs>